time for one of our favorite times of the week with Katie Halper, host of the Katie Halper Show, co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast, how the media cover themselves in glory. This is kind of astounding. Uh, Fox News, of all places, having huge blow-ups on their air with Geraldo Rivera uh, making a very pro-Palestinian case, running into the buzzsaw of some of the commentators there. I think it's, I've never seen anything like it. Let's just take a listen to a couple of these examples. The fact that the United States of America is providing Israel many of the weapons Israel is using today to kill Palestinian civilians without even demanding a ceasefire, Tlaib is right. That makes us complicit in an ongoing crime against humanity. Katie, last thought. Geraldo, that is such a dishonest argument to make to accuse the Israelis and the Americans of deliberately targeting civilians when we know we have it on video. We've known this for decades. The Hamas deliberately places military targets in schools, in media buildings, in hospitals. And when the Israelis have call no them to say to we're run. going to bomb, Where are they we're going, going to, to go? bomb. We are going to, so you're justifying Hamas using human shields in order to make the argument exactly as you are. And, and you are I saying, saying exactly that what the F-16, argument Hamas makes, which says Israelis kill civilians, which is an Israeli F-16 does going 500 miles an hour you is going to kill civilians. You are repeating Hamas propaganda. You are repeating Hamas propaganda. I am deeply experienced in that region. I am a Zionist. I am telling you how I feel. Geraldo Rivera does not understand that Hamas doesn't believe in Israel's right to exist. Hamas wants the Jews dead. And what does he do? The same thing with the police issue. He makes this an emotional thing, and he says, the Palestinian children. Of course we care about Palestinian children. You know the way we save yeah, Palestinian children? I haven't heard you children? say it. I haven't heard you incentivize say it. the terror group Hamas to not fire rockets indiscriminately into Israel. Wow, Katie, I mean, I haven't seen anything like that on American TV in a long time. First of all, crumpling of a piece of paper, throwing it, classic. amazing. Yeah, Just classic. Yeah. classic. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this, though, because Geraldo is also a guy who, like, defends Ghislaine Maxwell on Jeffrey Epstein. So I'm like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's not uh, as good of a look. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, you know, look, people are mixed bags, they're complicated. Uh, I'm not, I don't follow, I'm not a Rivarian when it comes to the Ghislaine Maxwell thing. But I do think, as as you said, this is kind of astounding. I've never, as you said, seen this on American TV, MSNBC. I mean, mm-hmm. they've had they've this round of attacks of you know of quote unquote clashes, uh, which is an interesting way to put a totally asymmetrical war uh, attack on people of Gaza. Um, there've been more. There's been some more honest criticism of Israel, but nothing like this. So what did you make of the substance of the debate um, and how that all came about? Well, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, this talking point about Hamas starting it is is perpetuated without ever being investigated, without ever being questioned. Hamas starting it and Hamas using human shields and make, you know, this whole narrative. It's, it's unfortunate that Israel has to do that, which is so disingenuous. I don't know who that Katie woman is. I'm ashamed to be share her name, uh, but she, she's saying that, you know, that's so dishonest. It's not dishonest at all what, what Rivera is saying, that the U.S. is totally complicit in this. We know this because the U.S. constantly brags about its special relationship with Israel, and we know that, you know, Biden hasn't done anything about this. Um, behind the scenes, he's probably maybe urging some more restraint. I have no idea, but he, he can't even call for a ceasefire. I mean, that's a they like both sides in this issue. So I think That's he nice did call for the sides. ceasefire. Well, I, I don't know if he called for a ceasefire by the time of the segment. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it, and this is oh, what we've been talking about here, where Zed makes this point that the media only really wakes up when hostilities break out, and you're like, oh, well, yeah. they're bombing each other. And you're like, okay, right. well, what is going on? And, again, like, yeah. what Hamas is doing is terrible. Um, and what we can see is that it's getting pretty complicated, right? Like, if you look at the sh- – and, and you can use complication to obscure, or you can say, right. let's hold on a second. What happened? Sheikh Jarrah. Okay, what's going on? There are some right. settlers who are moving in based on an Israeli Supreme Court ruling, which is based on Ottoman documents, and that's not a joke, um, whenever we're talking about, like, claims to land, which, again, we seem to understand very clearly whenever it comes to, like, nine dash lines in the South China Sea, why when the Chinese are like, here's this map from the 1500s, and we're right. like, get out of here. Like, no, right. you know, we're, we're not going to abide by that. And it doesn't seem to apply in this case. And if you right. talk about it that way, then you could say, okay, well, I see why. You know, why this is, I, as I understand it, the, one of the first times a lot of Arab Israelis are showing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of anger towards their own government. So from that yeah. perspective, 
there's just no coverage of that from that point of view. Yeah. And that's what really bothers me. And, and you, right. And then you have actually um, the founder, the director of Beth Selim, which is an Israeli human rights organization. And I think this is really important because lots of people, there's so many talking points. It's called Hasbara. That's the Hebrew word for Israeli um, PR mm -hmm. uh, propaganda. But there's so many Hasbara talking points. Um, and one of them is, you know, Israel, doesn't Israel have the right to defend itself? As if bombing civilian residential neighborhoods is self-defense, as if there's no choice, right, between uh, retaliating in some way. I mean, look, at the end of the day, what this is really about, and, and you said it's complicated, It's there's a lot of history, but it's also in some ways it's not complicated. Like mm. international law states very clearly that Israel is an occupying power, that Gazans have the right to defend themselves. Um, and the fact that people, this is fascinating. No one will say that in the government, right? We saw Ned Price like try to try to say that and try to not say that. He couldn't justify why he couldn't say that because it makes no sense. And the entire framing of this quote unquote debate just incorporates all these talking points and they're never interrogated or investigated. Like that uh, Hamas hides behind civilians, that um, Israel has no choice to defend itself. What would you do if you live there? And that is a really interesting question because you'll get this from some Israelis or Israel defenders, wherever they are. They say, oh, it's easy to criticize Israel when you're not there. Well, you know what? There's the entire like consensus of human rights organizations, including including Beth Selim, a Jewish Israeli human rights organization, is condemning what Israel is doing and they're calling them war crimes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, and that's idea. that's the other part of the yeah. debate that always bothers me, which is that the way it's like the Americanization of the conflict is so annoying because it's like you just said, go to Israel. I know a lot of people who are in Israel. I spent some time there. Um, Israeli center leftists are saying exactly what I'm saying around settling, around how it's a big problem, around alienation of the Arab Israeli population, about if we want to live up to, you know, because they love to talk about like with democracy and all that. Oh and like, God, if we're going to yeah. live up to that, then we should, you know, behave differently. But the collapse, the frank, the fact is they have no power in their own government, which is for a right. variety yeah. of reasons. Yeah. And, you know, the way that we Americanize it here is that you erase a lot of the context, which is actually, I mean, like you said, it's clear. Now, look, on the international law stuff, I mean, the U.S. is not even party to many international treaties. And I generally think that debates around international law are irrelevant because it's really just about who has power or not. But, right. and this is where I'm curious Let's, from your perspective, yeah. Yeah. which is that it does seem that the tide has turned in the U.S. media amongst the center left, too. So, yes, like Biden, Nancy Pelosi, all of them are, you know, they're saying, like, Oh, Israel has the right to defend themselves. They also all call for a ceasefire. I don't think that would have been the case right. back in 2014. So I'm curious yeah. what you think on that front. Well, that's interesting. And it's also kind of, wow, I just realized, like, yeah, it, it's funny that progressive or, like, center, le center left media wouldn't even call on a ceasefire, which, again, if you care about peace, like, mm -hmm. no matter which side you like, in theory, if you care about peace more than you care about advancing one kind of people over another people, which is really what Zionism has turned into, and... Uh, you know, I'd also like to say that I have family in Israel, and uh, it, in case you need any reminder that what Bibi Netanyahu is about is not fighting anti-Semitism, but it's a very particular Zionist project, I'd like to call everyone's attention to an incredibly anti-Semitic cartoon that his son posted. I don't know if you saw this. But oh, his son uh, posted Yonatan? Is his name? Yair, his Yair. Name. Yeah, Yair. 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 Right. Yonatan's his brother, right. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. He posted a an image of, like, George Soros. And it was an image that David Duke himself defended. And then you have uh, Netanyahu being really cozying up to basically like right wing anti-Semitic governments in Hungary and Poland. Um, and I'm I'm raising all of that to show that this what anti-Semitism has been so weaponized by Zionists. And uh, I have to admit, I am a little uncomfortable with the word Zionist, but that's what they are like. And that's an old, that's kind of like, because historically that term has sometimes been used to conflate Jews and, and Zionists, which is in itself an anti-Semitic trope. But that's also one of the reasons that I think we have to call it out. Like, that's what it is. It's Zionism. It's not Jewry. It's not being Jewish. And the assumption that if you're Jewish, you unquestioningly and blindly support Israel is in itself an anti-Semitic stereotype. Yeah. No, I think, I think that if people could at least discuss it in the way that you and I are talking about now, they would get more from it. And in a way, 
despite the blow up of what happened on Fox, I think it's probably to the benefit of the audience in order to actually hear something like that. Katie, yeah. out of time yeah. here, but uh, we got to run. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. We're rising for everybody right after this.